I said, in your blood vessel you have alpha 1, beta 2, M3. Alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction, beta 2 and M3 causes vasodilation. So if you stimulate a beta 2, you're going to get vasodilation. So if you start dobutamine in somebody who's in cardiogenic shock, without liver fat, without norepinephrine, you will risk the happening of worsening hypotension. So even in cardiogenic shock, your first line presser is still going to be norepinephrine. Have you norepinephrine in first, then you can add dobutamine on top. Got it? Now you can always make an argument saying, well, in end-stage heart failure patients, they end up staying on dobutamine drips or melatonin drips by itself. Yes, that is true. But those patients aren't technically in shock state. If somebody's in end-stage heart failure, blood pressure cannot be maintained to a certain extent. Yes, it does work as a good drug to inotrope. But end of the day, if somebody is going to be on dobutamine or milrinone, they have end-stage heart failure. Their prognosis is extremely poor. They need to get a heart transplant. If not, they're not going to live. But on the clinical context, if the patient is here and in shock right now, and the patient is hypotensive, and even if you think it's cardiogenic, you must start norepinephrine first. So those are all the pressures that you're going to play around with. Now,